It's about that time. Coming to you live every Wednesday night. Fantasy start and sit advice with your boy PL. And Michigan Mike, let's go. We talking about all things fantasy. We talking about all things fantasy. We talking about all things fantasy. Mike and PL, the fantasy show. What's up, football family? Welcome to week 10 of the Fantasy Football Show. I am your co-host, Mr. P.L. Coulter. And flanked to my right is my right-hand man, Mr. Michigan Mike. Michael Hasso. What's up? What's going on, Michigan Mike, man? You ready to talk some fantasy football? Yes, I am. All right, man. So, um, got some good news and some not-so-good news for the peeps this week, man. You oh, don't know. All right, now, the good news is you're getting uh, a, a ton of heavy hitter players back on your roster this week. It was on by yes. last week. Yes, definitely. Get all my players back. Yeah, but Mike, the um, the not so good news is, I mean, we got Indianapolis, Minnesota, New England, San Diego, Washington, and Houston out this week on by man. That's, that, mm. that's a lot of star power there, especially at the quarterback position, man. Yeah, definitely. Um, so um, what we'll do this week is uh, we'll talk quarterbacks uh, to see if we can get you uh, set for your week ten lineup. Um, now, before we get started, Michael, I just want to just lay the, the groundwork for what we're going to do today. Now, on the AFC side of things, we're 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 pretty much united. We're both Titans fans, right? Yes. Pray mm-hmm. for us, football family. Man, <laughs> it's been a long ride since 1999, but we will digress. Now, on the NFC side of things, Mike, I mean, we couldn't be more opposed. I mean, I'm a Cowboys fan. Everybody knows that, and you're a Eagles fan. I just can't say the word. I'd rather say crow, buzzard, bat. What? It's an eagle. Everybody loves an eagle. Oh, no, get. <laughs> We're getting close to the Thanksgiving game, but I will digress again. Now, both of us, man, we, we're united on one front. We both have quarterback issues right now. I mean, my quarterback, a couple of fractured uh, bones in his back, may play. He's in London, may play, may not. Why is that funny, Michelle? <laughs> because it's Romo and he's hurt again. I'm just laughing. <laughs> okay, but not so funny, Nick Foles. Your quarterback is out six to eight weeks with a collarbone. Now, why you got to bring that up? I'm just saying. Like, it's very relevant. There's a lot of Foles owners. Man, it, he's going to be out for a good while, man. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the show started right here. Now, we have Mark Sanchez came in from last week. He was decent. Had a couple yeah. hundred yards passing, a couple of touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, they play Carolina this week. What are you thinking? You think he's a viable replacement? I mean, if he's one of the only ones that are out there, I think he's going to be decent. You know, decent quarterback numbers. Um, depending on, I mean, most leagues, it'll probably be about 18 points, I'd say, he's going to get you. So, um, he's not going to get you Foles numbers. But then again, Foles numbers weren't that good anyways beforehand. So, um, I would take a chance on him. Okay, yeah, like if the, and by this time, the waiver wire is probably pretty thin. It is with right. 10 after all. Um, if you're desperate and you need to get a person in your lineup, I mean, Carolina has been, you know, they haven't been all that styled against the pass, and uh, he was pretty good in preseason, so it's not like that Chip Kelly has any lack of confidence in him. Now, on the Dallas side of things, maybe not so bright, at least from a Cowboys perspective, um, Brandon Wheaton came in last week, under 200 yards, one touchdown to Des Bryant in garbage time, a couple of key turnovers. Mike, what do you think his chances uh, if he does start this week against uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars? Man, I mean, if Wheaton starts, he actually looked pretty good. Um, he didn't. Tr- I mean, yeah, I know he didn't do. No, he he didn't do crazy good. But I mean, it's Jacksonville Jaguars, though. You know. I mean, the Jaguars are one of the worst pass defenses in the league. So you're saying you would start Wheaton this week? Yeah, I would start any quarterback that's starting for the Cowboys against the Jaguars. <laughs> they are certainly not the Arizona Cardinals defense. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, I mean, someone calling me right now. Huh? I think it's T.O. Should I answer it? Yeah, man, answer that button, man. All right, hold on. Hello? Tony, you guys can point the finger at him. You can talk about the vacation. Whoa, T.O., what, what's my vacation? What's our vacation have to do with that in Nashville? Right. We talking about Tony Romo getting hurt. What's up with Romo? And if you do that, it's real. Yo, my don't think he's listening, man. Maybe we should just let him talk. All right. Oh, okay. I, I hear what you're saying now. You had Tony Romo as your quarterback on fantasy, and now he's hurt, man. I understand, man. I have foals, so I, I definitely hear what you're saying. But, I mean, let me be real with you. You have to bench him. 
I'm benching foes. You just have to, man. I mean, yeah, T.O., but, I mean, the quarterback is, like, the most important position on the team. I mean, if, if he's not in there, I mean, I mean, what can you do? I mean, and, like, everybody loses a game or two, man. I mean, you know, the, the goal is to make the playoffs, man. Yeah, just make the playoffs. You should be good. This loss hurts. This loss hurts. Because I know this team is dedicated. They're putting in a lot of hard work to get where we are. We didn't execute. Yeah, it's you, but... Yo, Mike, yo, why you hang up on him, man? Man, I could man, he's being too sentimental for me, man. He's just too emotional right now. Mike, I think he was crying for real, man. I had to let him go, man. He could paint another time. And I don't, <laughs> we're doing the show right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> Mike, why are you always doing people like that to call the show, man? Man, that wasn't my intention, but I think he was really crying on the <laughs> part. I think so, too. <laughs> right. Oh, Lord. Quickly moving back to the show. Now, uh, in all seriousness, if you need a quarterback uh, this week, Derek Carr, quarterback of the Oakland Raiders, uh, not too shabby the last couple of weeks. He's averaging 230 yards, has three total touchdowns, and more importantly, he's averaging 29 um, completions, which um, will really come in handy and, and be an upside if you're in a points per completion league. Now, Mikey's playing the Broncos this week. They're not too good against the pass. Yeah. What do you think, man? I mean, they're, they're not too good against the pass, and of course, everybody knows that Broncos put up points. So he's definitely going to play that uh, catch-up game. So Right. You can get plenty of garbage uh, right, completions uh, at the end of that game because it will probably probably be out of hand. Now, um, a tight end that uh, he'll be throwing to that's been pretty productive lately for the Oakland Raiders. And to back up, um, tight end, Gronk. We got uh, David Allen. We've got um, Antonio Gates. Some heavy hitter tight ends are, that are going to be out this week. Um, you may want to take a look at Michael Rivera. Now, the last couple of weeks, Mike, 15 receptions, 121 yards, and two TDs. Two of those against the Seahawks last week. Mike, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, Derek Carr um, definitely goes towards his tight ends and favors them a lot as far as a, a blanket to have. So right. I would definitely pick him up. Right. And, uh, and, and an encouraging thing about him is both of those catches were in the red zone of uh, Walter style. Now, uh, a quarterback that you took a chance on last week, Mike, and, and it proved to be pretty well, was um, Brian Hoyer. Pretty good play this week. 295 yards passing, three total TDs. He's averaging that the last couple of weeks. Um, Bengals defense, mm, they're solid, but not so much on the pass. Yeah, I mean, I would. This one against Cincinnati, I'm not feeling too well on. Um, 255 against the air is okay. So he's going to be getting average numbers for quarterbacks. But, I mean, if he's the best bet out there, I would definitely start him. Okay, now. Um, one of his receivers you actually had on your team as well, right? Yeah, uh, I got a uh, Taylor uh, Gabriel, the wide receiver for Cleveland. Um, he actually had a really good week this past week. He had five receptions, 85, 87 yards, and one touchdown. So he um, he'll definitely pick him up. Right, and now the Bengals are pretty stout against the run, and uh, we know Ben Tate and uh, Taylor Swift struggled a little bit last week. Uh, so Horry may have to throw more than uh, he usually does in that matchup as well. Um, now, Mike, what are your games to watch this week? So the games to watch this week, I have San Francisco at New Orleans. All That's right. going to be heavy powered and plus it's in a dome. Right. Um, I also have Denver at Oakland, which we spoke with earlier. Yes, you know, sir. We're going to say it's a high scoring game. Um, Oakland's going to have to play a lot of catch up. Right. So a lot from of a fantasy there. perspective, hey, garbage points are points, period. Yes, definitely. So, hey, I'm, I'm a Des Bryant owner. So, right. The, so you reap the benefits of that. Uh, I needed that two, two <laughs> completions, <laughs> final touchdown. Yeah, I was definitely happy on that. Right. But right. I digress. Um, and the last game I have is <laughs> Chicago at Green Bay. Yeah, that's, that's definitely watch out for that one. Right. And Chicago back from by that offense. Uh, hopefully, it will uh, get it in gear. It should be fireworks. For sure, good job by you. And 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 that's right, ladies and gentlemen. When you hear that buzzer, you know it's time for this week's ho 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 Now, Matthew Stafford owners, uh, if you plan on playing him this week, then you, my friend, are officially on Homer Alert. Now, I know a couple of weeks ago, the last time Stafford owners had him. In the lineup, he put up over 300 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and a comeback win against the Falcons, Mike. But this week has red flags all over the field, man. Um, the Miami Dolphins defense, 
They're, they're, they're pretty good, man. Second against the pass, just over 200 yards passing, 201 yards averaging for the season. Two weeks ago, they held um, Jay Cutler under 200 yards passing. Man. Last week, they held um, Phillip Rivers under 200 yards passing. More interceptions and touchdowns. I think they're the real deal. And they're not getting any love. Like, no, they're flying underneath the radar. Right. Underneath the radar, nobody is paying it. And let's not forget in week one what they did to Tom Brady mm -hmm. and that upset win. So, Stafford owners, I mean, if you can, if there's a um, a car or someone else out there that has a better matchup for the fantasy value, you may want to go ahead and take a look at that this week. Now, if you have any fantasy questions or you'd like to hit us up on Twitter, you can always reach me at PL Coulter. That's at P L C O L T E R. And you can always reach my co host at Michael Hosso. That's M I C H A E L J A S S O. Life is a sport, so always play to win. Go blue.